conceptual people talk about all of the elements Good morning, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I hope that all of you are off to a great start for your week, uh, that you are prepared to take on the challenges that are inevitable, and that you have established a specific and clear goal uh, that you plan on achieving or obtaining and you are fixed on it. Uh, no matter where you're at, no matter what you are currently going through, uh, you are capable of doing some exceptional and extraordinary things. And I want to encourage you to do that. Um, once again, before I get started here, I'm not going to be long, I'm still, uh, in the process of recovery. Uh, so I'm going to be monitoring uh, the amount of time I'm committing to anything for at least another couple of weeks. Uh, but I definitely think it's important to get back in and get myself establishing and doing the thing I love. I get so much joy out of sharing what I know, sharing my expertise, my knowledge, my passion. Uh, so I uh, am using this as a part of my healing process. I want to thank those of you who have shown me nothing but love and support as I have processed through this, those who don't know. Uh, and I won't be talking about this too much longer, but I mean, it, it, it was life changing. So I think uh, I have to be honest with myself uh, about the impact that this had on my life. Um, I had a number of heart attacks. Uh, not this past week that just went by, but the previous week, culminating in two major heart attacks at the end of uh, last week. And um, end of the week before last. And basically uh, about a week ago, Monday, yesterday made a week, I had a massive uh, heart attack. Not, I wouldn't miss it, a major heart attack. Um, I guess, you know, when you, when a heart attack is the result of a 90% blockage in a major artery, I, that's pretty serious. Um, from the cardiologist that did the, 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 the surgery said that if I had actually left the hospital, which I was pushing to do, I had had a, one, but you know, I was thinking that it was hypertensive, it, it, hypertensively induced and they had gotten that under control, I was good. So I'm literally pushing them to let me go. And they were like, we're not going to release you. And I'm like, well, I'm leaving anyway. And they said, okay, let's get this down. Let's get you your medication and we'll release you, but you'll have to sign, I think it's an ABA waiver or something like AMA, ABA, whatever it is. It basically states that you are leaving um, against the advice of the doctors. And so I'm literally signing this and I'm getting in the wheelchair and they're beginning to roll me out of the hospital. Literally, this is crazy. My wife's walking behind the nurse and I'm having these unbelievable chest pains. I'm literally having a heart attack while I'm trying to check out of this hospital. And, and, and I'm so stubborn that I'm knowing it's happening, but I'm like, okay, it's going to stop. It's going to stop. And it just got worse and worse to the point we get to the elevator to come down. And I'm like, I can't. You guys need to get me back to wherever y'all need to get me. I'm having a heart attack. And they rushed me in. They triggered the rapid response team. I mean, so many people came out of nowhere. It was literally unbelievably crazy to watch so many professionals work in sync to accomplish a common goal. I am forever indebted uh, to the staff at uh, Houston Memorial Willowbrook uh, for the work that they did in saving my life to the cardiologist, Dr. Vivek, not even trying to pronounce the rest of his name. Nobody else at the hospital does. Uh, he's got one of them real long names, so they just call him Dr. Vivek. But anyway, uh, dude showed up with his staff down in the uh, surgical procedure uh, room. They did their thing. Uh, they found a 90% blockage. They put a stent in, opened it up, um, saved my life. So here I am. 
Uh, it's amazing that something like that, and you can literally be sitting in your home a week later, uh, you know, talking. I mean, I, I, I know it and realize it. Uh -oh. I know it and realize uh, in, in the way I move that I've got a long way to go. Uh, certain things I can still feel, uh, but to be able to breathe and get up and walk on my own, uh, and do what I'm doing right now is an unbelievable thing. And I'm grateful uh, to God. I'm grateful to the staff. I'm grateful to my wife who was solid through the entire thing, I, even though I know uh, she was scared uh, about what was taking place. Uh, she, she stayed solid and I love her for that. And I love all of you guys who text me, called me, scolded me and everything else. Uh, I took it all with love and appreciation. So uh, on that note, I want to just say thank you to you guys. And then I'm going to go ahead and get through this because, you know, my endurance isn't what it normally is. So I want to get through this and uh, move on to whatever I'm going to do. You know, like I said, I'm really, really limited. Uh, I'm looking, I'm, I'm excited. I think I'll be back to really working with clients completely and fully next week. I'm um, trying to integrate a few in this week, uh, but you guys give me some time uh, because I want to really give what I do with you guys 100%. Um, and so I'm still feeling myself through uh, things like that. You have to understand when you're working with someone and you're fighting with them to achieve something, you take a part of that on and it becomes a part of your battle. And when you got people that's going through and dealing with and battling all kinds of things, it's a weight and you have to learn how to manage that and you have to be ready for it. So that's, I'm just preparing myself mentally, emotionally, spiritually, psychologically, and physically to take on what I love to do in a full capacity. But I love all of you guys so much. Um, you give my, my, my existence purpose. And so I love you guys. Okay, let's talk about the number one reason people fail to succeed. Uh, in simple, it's fear. Now, it's fear in a lot of different ways, in forms and in manners of presentation and reality. Uh, some people are fearful of being criticized, how people are going to critique their goals, how people are going to critique their plan, how people are going to critique their expectations and anticipations about what it is they want to do. People are going to say they're crazy. People are going to say they're foolish. People are going to say they're not good enough. People are going to say all types of things. And there are people who literally are frozen by the fear of what someone else says. Thank you, Tangie. Thank you so much. People are really, really, really paralyzed by the fear of what someone else is going to say. Look, you are gifted. Uh, I've, I've had the unbelievable, unbelievable opportunity to work with all types of people over the course of my life and career. I've worked with children and adults with autism and Down syndrome and uh, other types of diagnosis that deal with mental uh, uh, disabilities. And I've worked with people from poverty. I work with people from uh, all forms of trauma. The one thing I can tell you is I have yet to meet a person who didn't have a gift, a person who didn't have something that the creator gave them that made their life have meaning and value. Now, it's up to you to tap into it. It's up to you to activate it. It's up to you to actualize it and optimize it. It's up to you to sit up and say, I don't care what anyone else thinks about me. I know my life has meaning. I know that my life has purpose. I know that somewhere inside it's something great trying to get out and I'm opening the gate of my greatness. That's something that you have to be willing to do despite what other people are going to say. Because what I can tell you is no matter how good you are, no matter how well planned you are, no matter how connected you are, there are going to be people who are simply not going to back you, who are going to say negative things, who are going to make negative assessments. There are people who have made it a career in telling people why they can't do something. And that's their situation. That's their reality. But you don't have to assume it. You don't have to accept it. You don't have to uh, embody it. 
you can live based off of what you know deep down inside the fear of opinions of others the fear of failure man if i go out there and i try this and then it doesn't work oh well it didn't work get up try again keep trying until you succeed success comes on the heels of micro failure uh one of the things that my first mentor taught me was that my success will be built upon the back of uh upon the backs of failures and he said that i would uh i was extremely good at failing forward and at first i didn't understand what he meant and then he explained it and he says that you have this uncanny ability to set these crazy monstrous goals that 99 percent of the people on this planet would think were absolutely ludicrous and you set them and then you actually go for them he says rarely do you hit them but because you set them so high even your failures will trump the successes of most. You will fail forward. And that's how I spent my life. I spent my life with the desire and the attempt to fail forward. And why is failing forward so important to me? See, when I set my goals so extremely high that it's virtually impossible to hit them, but I strive for them with everything I have, I guarantee that I leave nothing on the table. See, if I were to set my goals to be easily attainable, I would hit them, but I wouldn't know how much of me I left out there untapped because it didn't take all of me to get it done. It, 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 that, there's something that I left out there because I took the easy road because winning and saying I was successful was more important than being my best. And you have to make up in your mind what's most important. Having a bunch of notches checked off because you did something or being the absolute best you can and taking the bumps and the bruises and the failures along the way. I've chosen the latter. I'm not worried about how many things I get checked off. I just want the things that I do get checked off to be beastly. I want the things that I do get checked off to be massive and monumental. I want the things I do get checked off to have lasting meaning in the lives of someone else other than myself. And, 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 and then after the fear of failure is the fear of pain. It, it, it's gonna hurt. See, the, there's a part of our reptilian brain or what we also call our ancient brain, the oldest part of us, and its only design is to protect us to protect us from harm and pain. And so it literally is designed to instinctively look for what's wrong and it identifies it. And you literally have to take uh, the more evolved parts of your brain to override it and to train it to trust you. Or it will find everything wrong and it will have you in fight or flight all the time because we live in such a complex world now that fight or flight is triggered not no longer by saber-toothed tigers and other types of life-threatening creatures and situations is triggered now by bills that can't be paid, by relationships that are on the cusp of uh, self-destruction or implosion. And now it's triggering what we call chronic stress. And chronic stress dumps uh, tons of the hormone cortisol and and hormones, cortisol, and adrenaline into the bloodstream, which is good when you're getting ready to run a sprint or maybe take on some weights or maybe have to fight to defend yourself, literally. But it is horrible on the health when it's consist constantly present as it is in the, in, the, in the instance of chronic stress. And so what you got to do is you got to train that brain, stop looking for what may cause pain because anything that's worth having, it seems to be hidden behind pain. Um, I heard Will Smith say one time that he believes God hid everything worth having on the other side of fear. I would add pain. God hid everything worth having on the other side of fear and pain. Those who are 
absolutely adverse to pain will never truly achieve the things in life that will turn their lives upside down and around and provide them with this unbelievable opportunity to do exceptional and extraordinary things. They will stand back and they will assign themselves to a life of mediocrity because they refuse to take on the pain and the, and the uncertainty and the fear. You've got to get beyond that. Finally, the fear of hard work. The fear of hard work. It's like there's this massive aversion to putting in the work. There's always this find the easy route. I'm not, I'm not speaking against those who believe in working smart. Not at all. I believe that the better planned you are, the more knowledgeable you are, the greater the strategy the easier the path, but you still have to put in the work. You can't circumvent the demand and mandate and the requirement uh, to put in the work. You've got to wake up in the morning prepared to put in the work. And whether you're trying to change your life, break an addiction, build a business, change your financial situations, save your marriage, whatever it is, you've got to put in the work. It's no way around that. Put in the work. My advice to anybody that's out there and they're trying to turn their lives around is to put in the work. Even when you can't see the results of your efforts paying out initially, keep putting in the work. Avoid the easy route. I tell people this all the time, avoid the easy route, because what I've learned in life, and I've been doing this for a while, is that the only ones who benefit from the easy route are those who are selling you easy solutions that don't produce. See. Uh, whether it's weight loss, there's an easy solution to it. You can buy this and take this and you're going to drop so many pounds in so many days. And, 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 and no, you're going to have to put in the work. You're going to have to change your eating habits. You're going to have to leave that sedentary lifestyle. You're going to have to uh, active. You're going to have to ma manage your nutritional intake so that you optimize on nutrition while minimum minimizing caloric intake. That's just simply how it's going to have to be done to sustain long-term and healthy uh, results. You've got to put in the work. And the only one benefit from the easy route are the ones selling the easy solutions. And easy solutions have no longevity. So I want to encourage you. Finally, we're in the midst of a crisis. It's a crisis that no matter how you look at it and from what perspective you see it and how you are personally experiencing it will change your life. It's of that magnitude. Whether you believe the coronavirus is as bad as they say it is, or you're one to believe that they're overhyping it. And there's so much misinformation out there. It's hard to be able to decipher what's real and what's not. Things are changing. And things will change forever in some ways. Here's what I can tell you by my observation of history and time and the manner in which we deal with times like this is that those who adopt new principles of behavior while sustaining their own values, interests, and principles, but adopt and adapt. Adapt to the newness, understand how things are working, and adapt your behavior, your thinking, and your strategy. This could be the time that totally blows you up. This could be the time that you, and I don't mean by finding something and price gouging somebody. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about there are going to be new opportunities to do new things. Nature always autocorrects. And sometimes you have some say in it and sometimes you don't. But it will always be your ability to adapt 
to what's going on that's going to ultimately that's going to ultimately determine how you fare in the moment of crisis. Uh, if you research history, it has been in the moment of crisis, financial crisis, that the most wealth has been obtained in massive, in massive uh, amounts. Uh, during the Great Depression, a lot of our millionaire, millionaires were created. Uh, during the recession, uh, coming out of the 80s into the 90s, uh, we had the dot-com explosion. Uh, then we had the dot-com crash. And then we had another recovery. And now it's tech that's pushing and producing mil millionaires at a pretty unbelievable rate. Um, there's no difference between you and the people who are learning how to win in this rapidly evolving world. It's changing. The world is becoming smaller and smaller, whether we like it or not. We're no longer so much impacted by local and federal or national economies. We're now at the, at the, at the uh, mercy of a global spectacle and a global economy that we must learn to understand. We must learn to master our movements based on its movements and understand that there's absolutely nothing that can happen that we cannot adjust to and win in. But we must not allow fear to be the compulsion that drives us. We must develop an understanding because when you have an understanding and you have a comprehensive awareness, it tends to mitigate fear. And that's where we should be, is dealing with a mitigated and dis diminishing fear because we simply understand how things work. So that's my challenge. Don't become frenetic and unglued because what's going on. Pay attention. Stop taking superficial information at, 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 at face value and start to take it and then dissect it and anatomize it and look into it and research it and validate it and come up with your own understanding because the more you do that, the more powerful you become, the more of an asset you become. And as you become an asset, the value that your life has in this world increases. And that's what's going to get you to the next level is being an asset in a time of need. So don't let this sit up and put you in a place of fear. No. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Power, love, power first. Love, high on the frequency scale, 500 hertz minimal, and a sound mind, stabilized in your thinking. On that note, I'm going to get out of here. Don't forget, uh, we're, we're, we're kicking everything back off slowly but surely. But if you surely, uh, but if you want to get in on uh, uh, what we're doing with the 30 day challenge, I'm also, for those who didn't hear, launching a 90 day challenge that's directly associated with my need to heal uh, and to become holistically healthy. Uh, meaning mind, body, spirit, uh, psychologically, emotionally, healed, balanced. It's going to be important. I'm going to do that. I'm creating my own plan. Uh, I would love to create a plan for you. Uh, this is a 90-day challenge, not a 30-day challenge, because it's going to require a little more effort and consistency to establish the habit but I'm excited about it. I am committed to it, and I would love you guys to join me. I have not put the uh, price on the program yet, but you guys reach out to me if you're serious about it, um, and I will definitely have uh, price points by the time uh, the day ends. Um, but if not, make your own commitments uh, to yourself. Uh, I'm not one that's going to tell you. If you don't work with me, you're crazy. If you don't work with me, 
You're never going to, I mean, there are some good people out there that do some things. What I will tell you is invest in yourself. Don't let people talk you out of paying for cents so that you don't, you, you, uh, so that you don't have to live it in experience. Something my great grandmother, my adopted mother, Ernest Lee Wallace used to say, she would come tell me, I don't think you should do this. Or I think you should do it that way. And me being typical male and hard-headed would, okay, and go right ahead and do exactly what she said, don't do or do, or don't do what she said do. And she'll come back and she'll see me doing it. And she'll say, okay, sometimes bought sense is better than borrow. What she was saying was, when you're real smart, you borrow the sense of other people who have already experienced it so that you don't have to go through it. And in this instance, you pay people who have spent years mastering different disciplines and skills to help you navigate through something that could take you years to do in months. It's a wise investment. Which what she was saying was, you can listen to me and not have to go through trial and error and bump in your head or you can actually pay for the sense by going through trial and error and bumping your heads. You borrow it when you take it from someone else and you use it. You, you shorten the learning curve and you take a more safe approach, but that's up to you. But I'm just telling you, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I have done it myself more than once. Uh, I didn't get to where I'm at by doing this all on my own. And, you know, it must be, you know, I hear, I hear another thing I hear, man, is you sell it. Knowledge. Knowledge is free. Knowledge is free. It's absolutely free. And I tell people all the time, if you want to be an autodidact, if you want to go out there and just soak up all of that knowledge out there, take trial and error, do all the research, do all the stuff that it takes to master this and get it for free, go right ahead. It took me 30 years to get it. Go right ahead and do it. It's free. If you want the learning curve short, if you want to take the expertise of different people and apply them to your life immediately, it's going to cost you because they're going to charge you for the work they've put in. That's how it works. When you go to the cleaners, you're paying them because they have invested in the equipment and the knowledge of knowing how to clean your clothes better than you. When you go to the restaurant, you, you're paying for something that they mastered and probably do better than you. Yes, can you cook your own food? Yes. Will it taste like that? Probably not. Unless you're that type of person and then, okay, you're good. But you've got to be willing to invest in yourself. And that's, like I said, it may not be with me. I don't even accept everyone who comes to me. Some of you look at that, you know, well, now they're probably mad at me. But I really and truly do not. There are certain things that I will not accept. And, you know, it, there are a lot of different uh, variables, but there are things I won't accept, and I'm okay with that. My thing is you have to be willing to put in the effort and the energy, and that's what I want to encourage you guys to do. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. I'm, I'm going to get out of here. Um, as I always say, I live my life on full every day so that when I leave this place, I'm going to down eat. I challenge you to do the same thing. And on that note, I am out of here.
Conceptual. Yeah, it's it's people talk Real about talk, it. I ain't throwing shots. Careful who 